Was Jesus, his mother, and those around him depicted as white or black? If we examine the paintings and artworks in European museums, we often see Jesus portrayed as a fair-skinned, handsome figure with long blonde hair, blue eyes, and a tall stature, a typical representation of a European man. This portrayal suggests a belief that Jesus was a white man from Europe. However, interestingly, the Bible does not provide any description of Jesus' physical appearance. So, how did Europeans come to depict Jesus in this particular way? And how can we uncover the truth about what Jesus, his mother, and his community truly looked like? This is where the Russian vaults containing 15th and 16th century religious paintings become significant. These hidden artworks are now being revealed to the world, challenging the European depictions of Jesus. Unlike Europe, Russia did not actively participate in the propagation of whitewashed religious paintings. The depictions found in Russia offer a unique perspective, possibly preserving a more accurate representation of reality. So, what do these paintings tell us? Let's explore further. Europe's portrayal of Jesus has long been a source of confusion regarding his appearance. Despite efforts to depict him as white in religious art, doubts persist, particularly because Jesus was a Jew born in Israel, where people likely had darker complexions. Jesus' potential blackness, much like his Jewish heritage, symbolizes his connection to a specific community. This racial dimension arises from Christianity's initial rejection of Jewish identity. The idea of whiteness being equated with superiority based on skin color and cultural background overlooks Christianity's fundamental principle of unity in Christ. This principle asserts that through Jesus, divisions among people, whether based on geography, language, social class, or any other distinction, should not sow discord or hostility. In Christ, all are meant to be united. Therefore, the racial divide between black and white directly contradicts the essence of Jesus and his universal mission. Jesus' potential blackness carries historical significance because, like his Jewish identity, it anchors him in a specific time and place, just as it does for his followers. To truly grasp who Jesus was, we need to consider the historical setting in which he lived and died. As Karl Barr pointed out, mentioning Pilate's name in the Creed reminds us that Jesus suffered in the real, tangible world, not some distant realm. Therefore, we cannot ignore the complexities of the lives and bodies Jesus identified with. Just as Paul teaches, each member of Christ's body brings unique gifts and insights. If Jesus associated himself with specific people marked by distinct characteristics, then understanding those people's identities profoundly shapes our understanding of him. Disregarding the possibility of Jesus being black risks falling into the error of docetism, which suggests Jesus only appeared to have a physical body, a notion incompatible with his divine nature. Although Jesus, as a Jewish man, embodied the word uniquely, his resurrection and exaltation allowed his presence to transcend time and culture, manifesting in various human forms throughout history. In many Western societies, the popular depiction of Jesus has been that of a fair-skinned man with long, wavy, light brown or blonde hair, often depicted with blue eyes and a beard. However, the Bible provides no physical description of Jesus, and evidence suggests his appearance was likely quite different from this traditional portrayal. The biblical accounts offer little insight into Jesus' physical appearance, primarily drawing from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These texts indicate that Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth, located in Galilee, then part of Palestine, and now northern Israel during the first century. While the Bible mentions Jesus beginning his ministry around the age of 30, it provides minimal details about his physical traits, aside from noting that he did not possess any remarkable features. Isaiah 53 2 suggests that the Messiah did not possess any outstanding beauty or appearance that would draw attention. This implies that Jesus likely did not stand out physically. In Revelation 1.14, 
15, John's vision of Jesus describes his hair as white like wool, his eyes as fiery, his feet as glowing bronze, and his voice as powerful like rushing waters. Though the description is not explicit, it hints at features commonly associated with black individuals. The historical Jesus likely had brown eyes and skin, typical among first century Jews from Galilee, a region in biblical Israel. However, no definitive record of Jesus' appearance exists as no images from his lifetime have been discovered. While the Old Testament describes King Saul and David as tall and handsome, little mention is made of Jesus' physical attributes in either the Old or New Testaments. Furthermore, during Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane before his crucifixion, Judas Iscariot had to identify him among the disciples to the soldiers, implying they looked similar. Yet, the Bible does not elaborate on their resemblance or racial characteristics. Reflecting on these events raises questions about whether certain truths were intentionally omitted from the Bible to conceal realities or if the Gospel writers overlooked such details. Amidst contemporary reflection on society's history of racism and the pursuit of truth, the traditional portrayal of Jesus as a white European man has come under fresh scrutiny. A significant catalyst for this re-evaluation stems from recent developments in Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin garnered attention by relocating one of Russia's most sacred icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. This move allowed the world to behold religious paintings previously unseen, reshaping perceptions of Jesus, his mother, and his community. The icon, Andrei Rublev's Trinity, was moved from Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery to the Russian Orthodox Church for a year. It depicts the Oak of Mamre, where three angels visited Abraham in the Book of Genesis. The icon prominently features black icons dating back to the 14th century, sourced from private collections across Russia. These rare and remarkable artworks, many of which were lost during the Soviet era, have captivated audiences with their beauty and profound significance, offering a transformative visual encounter. But what exactly are these Russian icons, and what stories do they hold? These icons, dating back to the 14th and 15th centuries, are religious paintings that have a rich history. The tradition of creating icons began in Kievan Rus after its conversion to Orthodox Christianity in 988 AD. Initially, these icons closely followed the styles and patterns revered in Byzantine art, originating from Constantinople. However, as time progressed, Russians expanded the range of icon types and styles beyond what was seen in other Orthodox regions. Before the 17th century, religious art in Russia lacked the innovative flair seen in Western European traditions. However, by the 17th century, Russian icon painting underwent a significant transformation, influenced by religious artworks and engravings from Protestant and Catholic Europe. Changes in liturgical practices initiated by Patriarch Nikon in the mid 17th century led to a schism within the Russian Orthodox Church. Traditionalists, known as the Old Ritualists or Old Believers, adhered to the stylized depiction of icons, while the State Church adapted its approach. Consequently, icons began to be painted in a traditional, stylized and non-realistic manner, blending Russian stylization with Western European realism, often resembling Catholic religious art of the time. While these types of icons are commonly found in Russian Orthodox churches, they can also be seen in various rites of the Catholic Church. Typically crafted from wood, Russian icons come in various sizes, from small ones found in households to larger ones adorning churches and monasteries. Some icons were even made from copper. Many Russian homes proudly display icons on walls in a special corner known as the red or beautiful corner, symbolizing their religious devotion. In Russian culture, icons are often referred to as written, reflecting the dual meaning of the Russian word pisat, which signifies both painting and writing. Icons are seen as visual representations of the gospel, meticulously crafted to ensure faithful and accurate portrayal. Some of the most revered icons, believed to have miraculous powers, are associated with specific towns, such as the Vladimir, Smolensk, 
chasm and Pochev images of the Virgin Mary, known as the Theotokos by Orthodox Christians. Andrei Rublev, a prominent Russian icon painter, was officially canonized and recognized as a saint by the Moscow Patriarchate in 1988. His most celebrated masterpiece is the Old Testament Trinity. In Russian culture, icons were frequently commissioned for personal use, often featuring saints associated with individuals or their families. These icons were often adorned with metal covers made from gilt or silvered metal, sometimes embellished with enamel or filigree work, or adorned with artificial semi-precious or precious stones and pearls. Pairs of icons featuring Jesus and Mary were popular wedding gifts for newly married couples. However, at the time of their creation, people didn't realize the historical significance of these icons. They were meant to be preserved and stored in secure vaults, only to be unveiled in recent years. In reshaping global perceptions, icons depicting the Virgin Mary hold a prominent place in Russian iconography and religious practice, surpassing those of any other figure. Marian icons often replicate images believed to be miraculous, of which there are numerous examples. While most Marian icons portray her with the infant Jesus, some exclude the child. However, they all share a common feature. They depict Jesus, his mother, and those around them as black. In later years, numerous Russian icons were either destroyed or sold abroad by agents of the Soviet government, although some were hidden to avoid destruction or smuggled out of the country. Since the collapse of communism, several icon painting studios have reopened, producing works in various styles for both domestic and international markets. Additionally, many older icons that were previously concealed have resurfaced or been returned from abroad. The survival of these Russian icons owes much to the preservation efforts of museums. Without them, these invaluable pieces of history would have been lost. Once plentiful, their numbers have dwindled to just 50,000. The unveiling of these icons stands as a powerful affirmation of the enduring strength of truth. Their genuine nature prompts us to reassess our historical perceptions, particularly regarding the representation of black figures. While these depictions may have remained concealed for centuries, their rediscovery now sheds light on previously untold narratives, challenging entrenched beliefs, and fostering a more inclusive perspective of history. Presently, the Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome hosts an exhibition featuring 40 Russian icons, marking their inaugural display outside of Russia. These artworks were concealed following the October Revolution of 1917 to safeguard them from anti-religious actions. This marks the first occasion such a substantial collection of Russian icons has been showcased in Italy. Moreover, a dozen previously unseen icons are now publicly exhibited for the first time. Typically crafted from wood, icons portray saints or sacred themes within the Orthodox tradition. They are revered as divine inspirations interpreted by artists guided by divine intervention. Their profound symbolism encapsulates the essence of an icon as a conduit to a spiritual realm. The wooden material symbolizes the Holy Cross with its gilded surface representing divine illumination, while the attached fabric evokes the shroud that enveloped Christ's body. It's apt to liken the significance of Russian icons in Russia to that of the pyramids of Egypt or the temples of Greece. Spanning from the 15th to the early 20th century, the exhibition offers a rare insight into Russia's religious heritage through its artistic expression. Amid ongoing global dialogues, the unveiling of these black biblical icons has sparked considerable interest. Some argue that the darkening of the icons over time is merely a consequence of aging, while others contend that the depiction of black in the icons is not solely due to age, but rather a faithful representation of the depicted individual's skin tones. Several experts argue that the depiction of blackness in these icons authentically reflects the skin color of the individuals portrayed who were of African descent. They pose the question of why if age were the sole factor, the clothing of these figures did not also change to black in these artworks. 
According to some historical accounts, after the destruction of the Jewish nation by Titus, millions of Jews fled to Africa and settled in West Africa, where they eventually became enslaved. It is suggested that hostility towards black people is not incidental, but rather originates from the disobedience of the Israelites to God's commandments, as described in the book of Deuteronomy. The intermingling of the descendants of Shem and Ham, both believed to have had black skin, is seen as the underlying cause of this hostility, with Shem being punished for his disobedience. Another perspective posits that black people were originally depicted in the Bible, but their portrayal was later altered to depict them as white. However, in America, it is believed that Russians have preserved the authentic portrayal of history. So why does Russia stand alone in having religious paintings where Jesus and his people are depicted as black? The answer lies in Russian history. The Mongol invasion and subsequent occupation of Russia, known as the Golden Horde, had profound effects on the region's connections with the Byzantine Empire and the wider Christian world. Beginning in the early 13th century, the Mongols, under the leadership of Genghis Khan and his successors, launched a series of military campaigns resulting in the establishment of the Mongol Empire, one of history's largest continuous land empires. This expansion brought the Mongols into contact with various civilizations, including Russia. In 1237, they initiated a devastating invasion of the Russian principalities, which were fragmented and unable to mount a unified defense. The invasion culminated in the Mongols prevailing at the Battle of the Sit River in 1238. Subsequently, they assumed control over the region, establishing the Golden Horde as a vassal state and imposing tribute on Russia. The Mongol occupation had profound implications for Russia's connections with the Byzantine Empire and the broader Christian world. Before the invasion, Russia enjoyed close ties with Byzantium, particularly in religious matters, as the Eastern Slavic peoples had embraced Byzantine Christianity. The Russian Orthodox Church considered Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, as its spiritual center. However, the Mongol invasion disrupted these connections, with much of Russia falling under Mongol control, leading to disruptions in communication and trade routes that severed contact with Byzantium. Furthermore, the invasion strained the Russian Orthodox Church as the Mongols imposed their administrative structures, occasionally conflicting with the Church's authority. It is believed that before the invasion, both Russia and the Byzantine Empire had similar artistic representations. However, after the invasion, the trend of whitewashing religious paintings began in Europe, except for Russia, which remained under Mongol rule for another 250 years. This is why only Russia possesses religious paintings depicting Jesus and his people as black, while the rest of Europe whitewashes such depictions. So. Was Jesus truly black? Undoubtedly. There is strong evidence to support the idea. The Bible describes him as having hair like wool and feet like bronze, suggesting black and brown skin tones. Raised by a non-biological father during his childhood, he sought refuge in Egypt and performed miracles such as turning water into wine. Unfortunately, he was betrayed by a friend, unjustly arrested and ultimately executed by the government on false charges because his teachings challenged the state. But why does this prove his blackness? His experiences resonate deeply with the struggles faced by black people worldwide. Jesus undeniably stands among the most influential figures in history, and recognizing his black identity is crucial. The European Church's portrayal of Jesus as white constitutes a significant act of intellectual appropriation, perpetuating white supremacy. Embracing Afrocentrism and shifting away from a white-centric perspective is imperative. It entails actively challenging white-centric narratives and embracing a black-centric viewpoint that empowers individuals of African descent. The theological significance of portraying Jesus as black cannot be overstated. Firstly, it's crucial for white American Christians to confront and understand the profound implications of Christ's crucifixion within the context of the black experience in the United States. 
This experience encompasses not only specific atrocities like lynchings, slavery, Jim Crow laws, segregation, and mass incarceration, but also four centuries of enduring second-class treatment, inhumane conditions, constant suspicion, condescension, and humiliation. Recognizing this history is essential for fully grasping the message of the gospel, which revolves around the scandal of a crucified Messiah. Ignoring or glossing over this history hinders a genuine understanding of the core essence of the gospel. Secondly, the presence of the black Christian community in America holds significant weight. Despite sharing the same faith as those who enslaved and oppressed them, black Americans overwhelmingly identify as believers. The resilience, hope, and love demonstrated by the black church embody the teachings of Jesus, forging bonds that transcend mere neighbors or fellow citizens, often making black Americans our brothers and sisters in Christ. Even Jesus' own teachings provide a rationale for recognizing his blackness. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus aligns himself with the marginalized and oppressed, affirming that whatever is done to them is done to him. This principle serves as the foundation of Christian teachings concerning Jesus and the marginalized, highlighting his solidarity with those who suffer. Moreover, this understanding enables the depiction of Jesus as black in art. Such portrayals do not impose symbolism on black individuals or relegate them to victimhood. Instead, they emerge organically from within the community as an expression of shared emotions, reflecting both communal sorrow and hope. Presenting Jesus as black underscores the imperative of acknowledging the injustices inflicted upon black individuals and rejects depictions that minimize or overlook this reality. Depicting Jesus, a Jew, as black is a testament to recognizing his identity as inseparable from acknowledging and addressing the injustices faced by black people today. Even though Europe may have collectively convinced itself that Jesus was white, the truth remains unaltered. The religious paintings found in Russia stand as compelling evidence that Jesus, his mother, and his people have been misrepresented for too long. Concealing Jesus' true complexion altered the perception, effectively making him appear as the saviour solely for white people. This portrayal didn't quite align with the reality. However, accepting Jesus as black brings clarity to the narrative. Understanding that the suffering endured by black people resonates deeply with what Jesus himself experienced. Isn't it plausible that Jesus, his mother, and his people were all black rather than white? What are your thoughts on why Europeans attempted to depict Jesus as a white man? Feel free to share your insights in the comments below, particularly regarding Jesus' appearance and the concept of black Israelites. If you're interested in watching more thought-provoking videos like this one, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell icon for notifications. We're dedicated to exploring topics that are often overlooked shedding light on the richness of black culture, civilization, and history, as well as presenting evidence of the remarkable achievements of black individuals throughout history. Thank you for watching, and until our next video, take care.